Hello and welcome to Music Worth Buying. This is TJR. And um, when we did our roundtable discussion of the early pre-release of Songs of Innocence by U2, we got together, myself, Robert, and you're here again, Robert, mm -hmm. and Kathy, who joined us uh, last time. Thank you for joining us again. Hi. And uh, so we said at the end of it that we would get back together and discuss the deluxe edition and just discuss the music on that disc. And we thank everybody for watching the last video, and we hope you'll find this video as interesting. Um, so let's just go ahead, and we're going to just go ahead and talk about uh, this uh, bonus disc that came with Songs of Innocence. And it starts off with, of course, uh, a new song called Lucifer's Hands. Right. Uh, Robert, do you want to start and say how, any, any thoughts about it? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's uh, I mean, I'm a pretty... Um, uh, you know, I'm pretty enthusiastic about this song. I mm -hmm. like how it comes in kind of with that distinctive blues lick. And then that's kind of like the backbone. But then over that is kind of like a funky rock dance groove that uh, that includes a big chorus that you might expect from you 2 And how they incorporate those elements in, in, an, in a very subtle way, I think, is very... Shows kind of the overall power of everything about this album. That, you know, they're not doing things very in a bombastic way. It's not maybe as dramatic as some of their previous albums. I think this is a more dense album, and you really need to give it some time. Okay. And I think that that's, um, you know, it's definitely designed for discer discerning listeners. But I, I do very much like this song. Okay. You know. Um, yeah, it, it's a really good song. I think that it touches on um, Bono. It's, it ties in definitely with the, the rest of the album. It, and it touches on... Um, the path that he chose to take in life a little bit with, uh -huh. and where you know it is his um kind of finding religion a okay. little bit is what it's talking about and how he feels he was saved yeah. okay i hadn't i yeah because myself personally i hadn't really had a chance to really examine the lyrics i was just kind of judging it as an overall song and i thought it was a pretty good song i thought it's as good as any of the songs on the album um and oddly, interestingly enough, since we're looking here, when we talked about the, of course, the the the, the pre-release came out on iTunes first for free mm -hmm. for everybody. Um, you know, the the packaging here, of course, on the on the actual release here contains the lyrics to the album, but on the bonus disc, there's no lyrics included for the new songs, unfortunately. Um, but uh, yeah, I had no idea what the song was about, so thank you for giving us a little bit of yeah, insight. Yeah, into I didn't that. know the, either. I mean, there's a lot of imagery in the song, but that does sound like that could, dev, you know, be a very central theme to that. There was that whole period early on where they talk about how um, they had become Christian, and they'd almost thought about giving up the band for that reason. Yes, they. Yeah. they that was. Um, I know you know, part of their history, and the Edge considered leaving uh -huh. at one point because he felt that the music industry conflicted too much with his personal beliefs. Huh. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm one for one thankful that they didn't walk away from you I'm, too. I'm glad they, yeah, I'm glad they, 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 they reasoned that one out. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so if no one else has any of the comments, we're going to move to the next track, which is another original song called Crystal Ballroom. Yeah, and yeah. I'll let you go ahead for yeah, Robert. And, and, uh, and I find this is a very, very introspective song, and I think this is, you know, U2's most personal album ever, and I think that the Crystal Ballroom has a very good and prominent place, uh, you know, on this bonus disc. I really like it. It, it's, it seems to be that he's talking about trying to understand his life, uh, you know, like, why are we here? But at the same time, he's saying, hey, I'm glad we are here, and he's celebrating life itself. Kathy might be able to shed more life on that specifically, but that's what I get out of it. But the song itself, I think, is just very... It has kind of this really infectious dance groove and almost like something that Broken Bells might do. And I just really like this song. Uh -huh. Can I ask you a quick question? Uh, why do you think it was called... Where do you think the title fits in with what, with what you just described what the song is about? Where do you think the title fits in Crystal Ballroom? You know, I, I don't know that... I mean, I was given that some thought earlier today, and, and I was trying to say, is it because... Maybe, you know, crystal means it's something that you can see through it. Okay. But maybe on the other hand, but when something's crystal, it's all, you see images, but they're not always clear. Maybe it's kind of like life itself, but I, I don't know that. Okay. You know, I haven't, I have to say, I haven't read a lot of interviews with the band beyond the notes that are in with the deluxe edition where they talk about these songs. Okay. And uh, Kathy? Um, yeah, I'm kind of in the same boat with you. I'm not 
sure where they're coming from with it, but I love this song. I uh-huh. think it's a great song. Okay. And um, it, 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 but it's talking about a lot of things. There, there are a lot of interpretations. Uh-huh. Where, do, where do you, where do you think the song, aside from Robert's interpretation, were there any, were there, was there anything you felt like the lyrics were describing to you when you were listening before you came up here and before this conversation? <laughs> Um, I, I think that he's talking about the meaning of life and, and where life come from comes from and how it how it starts. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm now I'm gonna go against the grain with both of you guys. Um I think it's an okay song. Mm-hmm. Um it's I thought it was I kind of and maybe I do need to delve deeper into the lyrics, but I was kind of feeling like this was just uh you two just trying to be do dance pop. You know, it's kind of it's kind of got a little bit of that that kind of that uh, dance disco type of sound. Crystal Ballroom makes me think of you know, makes me think of the disco ball, yeah. and maybe I'm getting all the wrong imagery here. And yeah, I, can see I, I you're missing at me right I see, now. I see it's more in depth than that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, no, and I'm not saying that your interpretation is not. I as don't have an interpretation. Mine, yeah. I'm just, i <laughs> and, and and my any interpretation I have is pretty surface uh-huh. level. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But I was just, I was just not taking enough with it yeah. musically and melodically to want to delve deep. And if I, I was just if, kind I, of okay. if I can inject here too, when I when I first bought the deluxe edition, it was about a week and a half ago. Uh-huh. I played played it a number of times and. And on this disc, I mean, some of the songs that we're, tracks we're going to be talking about in a few minutes jumped out at me right away because I was familiar with the tracks. Some of these, when I went back and listened to them a week later, I gave the album a rest for about a week, mm-hmm. went back and listened to the album with headphones. And it's funny how some of these recordings jumped out at me and I hear okay. so many more things. So I'm wondering, you know, and again, at least in my case, I have to listen to so much music being a you know, a music mm-hmm. writer and stuff, that sometimes you, there is that level of burnout you can get, and sometimes it's nice to put things down. Mm-hmm. But I did find my experience, especially with this song, yeah. uh, was much more profound oh, good. than when okay. I first heard it. So, okay. you, you know... There's you, hope I, for me yet. Yeah, there's hope for you. Maybe give it another some time. Okay. All right. We'll let you slide. Okay. Yeah, we'll let you slide so, on. So, right now, next we've got uh, uh, track three, which is the Acoustic Sessions. It's a 20-minute track. It's songs... From the album, done acoustically. From the original, pre, you know, the, the the first disc, so to speak, done acoustically. Mm-hmm. Uh, who wants to... I've got some thoughts I want to share, but I want to wait to hear about what you both yeah. have to say. Yeah. So. Would, you, would you like me to start? Or? Go ahead. Okay, yeah. so, um, you, you know, because like you said, it starts with every break and wave, and I think there's six songs on, as I recall, in the acoustic sessions here. Yeah. Um, but that's one of my favorites that they do acoustically. Not all of them work as well as... Is like to, you know that maybe they outdistance the original performances mm-hmm. that we first heard, mm-hmm. but this one I really like. I mean, it, it is very sparse. Um, I just love the beautiful piano on it, and and the vocals to me are very raw. Like Bono's voice is just it's it's like it's just out there. It's it's it sounds to me almost like the mic is dry. Like there's not a lot of effects on it, mm-hmm. and I just really like the fact that especially with my headphones this morning, I close my eyes and it's almost like I'm in a room and Mm -hmm. they're working out the song and stuff and you feel like you're a fly on the wall. Mm -hmm. And I just found it just did very gripping, you know, just really very much liked it. Okay. And how about you, Kathy? Um, I I really like this song as well. It's, it was one of my favorite songs off of the, um, first disc, the the download. Yeah. And, um, it's, no, go ahead. Just a great, Song, I, I mean. But the whole the acoustic sessions in general, also, just because we're yeah we're not going track by track. Just want to discuss it in general. Um, but. I think that the acoustic sessions were um, all really well done. Mm-hmm. I I enjoyed all the songs, uh-huh. and um, the instrumentation on a lot of them was it was different enough to make it almost like a whole new song. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, definitely. I would too. Now, as for me. Um, my only complaint about the acoustic sessions is that it's one 20 minute long track that they didn't break it up and give us the actual right. song titles, you know, every breaking wave acoustic session, right. you know, raised by wolves acoustic session. Right, exactly. Um, they're doing that on iTunes. Uh-huh. If oh, you buy it on oh, iTunes, okay. you get it that way. But on the disc, it just comes up as a 20 minute track acoustic yeah. sessions. Now with that little criticism aside, I'm going to tell you that I personally found the acoustic sessions to be a revelation. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to go so far as to say as, I wish they'd just done the whole album like this. Mm-hmm. It would have, I think it would have been a bold and daring move mm-hmm. um, because the way it was done, you know, the way the release as we got it, you know, in the uh, free download and the way it is on the first disc, you know, 
it's another U2 album. It sounds like a U2 album. If they'd done it like this, it wouldn't have sounded really like any U2 album before. The closest I can think of where U2 has sounded like this is maybe some of the, the Sun Sessions uh-huh. and Rattle and Hum. Right. Yeah, yeah, you I know, when that. they did like Angel of Harlem. Right. This would be the closest that this yeah. would sound like. But I, 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 and I swear to God, like Every Breaking Wave, that was one of my least favorites uh-huh. on, the, on the disc, on the first, on the, the you know, the, the, re, the pre-release. Um, I love it mm-hmm. in this version, way better. Yeah. And, and I listened to that, yeah, they should have just done the whole yeah. album this way. Yeah. This would have been a daring move. It would have been, sounded completely different from any other U2 album. And since the album is about songs of innocence, looking back on your youth, and trying to embrace your roots, I think this would have been a, kind of a great symbolic way to do it, even though U2's first album wasn't acoustic. Yeah. This yeah. would have been kind of a good symbolic way to do it. Or at the very least, they should have done this the way Neil Young did Story Tone, mm-hmm. where you had the orchestra album and then the solo, just Neil yeah. Young on the guitar or yeah. on the piano. Um, they could have almost done that. They almost took that step here. Yeah, yeah they, could they, have... they could have done one CD as the, you know, the band where it's, this is how U2 normally sounds, and then here's the acoustic version yeah. of the album. Um, but yeah, it, it, at the very least, they should have done that way. Otherwise, I think... Uh, I think I wish they'd done the whole album this yeah. way. Now, one thing, uh, one way I will jump in, and then we'll, we'll let Kathy, like, on this song, Every Breaking Wave, I agree with you, but the next song that they do acoustic, on the, the acoustic sessions here California, mm-hmm. I like the original version, the you know, on the download version. I did think that one, and that was very well produced, and it had a lot of mm-hmm. Beach Boy-esque yeah. elements to it. Oh, yeah. That song, I thought, was more convincing and more compelling on the original one. Okay. But I'm with you. Like, even Raised by Wolves, I think that that one, as powerful as it was, there was a quality to that one on the acoustic sessions. And the one song I really want to say before we move on is that um, there was one song, um, uh, I, I want to say, I think it was Song for Someone, where you, you heard this real gentle piano, and, and but Bono's vocals were as heartfelt and emotive mm-hmm. as I've ever heard them. And I just, that was just really powerful on this, uh, you know, on these acoustic sessions, you know. I, I will say, uh, I will add that uh, Raised by Wolves is at least one song where I'm glad I've got the band version, mm-hmm. so to speak, uh, the original version that we all heard first, because I, I, that's to me the strongest song on the album, on the uh-huh. original, al- on the, you know, the, the band version of the album, I will call it, versus the Acoustic Sessions, though I love the Acoustic Sessions version yeah, too, too, which is kind of why I've said a little bit, well, okay, at least, or at least do it both ways, mm-hmm. if yeah. not just have done it entirely this way, but like if they had done it entirely guys, this yeah. way... I would have been, I think, a lot more thrilled with yeah. this album. Yeah. And maybe, who knows, uh, maybe these acoustic sessions are a little less compressed yeah. than the band version. They do sound really raw. And like, like I said, you know, you know, I don't know about the compression level. I haven't yeah. listened Possible. to them with that ear. But yeah, um, but yeah they, they are. it is something you close your eyes and listen to them, and it sounds like you are in the room with them. I mean, and I love the way that the horn section was used. I know strings are used as well. Yeah. But, but there's just some really great things like you said, that warranted a separate album, or like you said, a, a deluxe edition where you get these parallel tracks, you know. Good. So, Did you want anything else, Kathy, or have we talked it out? I think we've talked it <laughs> out. Okay, we've okay. talked it out. So now, after that, we've basically got two alternate versions. We've got The Troubles, alternate version, and Sleep Like a Baby Tonight, alternate perspective mix by, hopefully I say his name right, T-C-H-A-D, Chad, Chishad, I don't know, Blake. Uh-huh. Chad. Chad Blake, okay. okay. The T's just there to confuse me. Um, but, uh, we've got, just got these two alternate versions. Um, I'll, I'll just, whoever wants to talk first on them. Um, okay. Well, uh, you know, I just, uh, just maybe a, a very general, uh, version, uh, or maybe description here, but like on the troubles, I like the song itself that it's a mature and, and kind of textured take on how, Bono faced and conquered his fears maybe when he was growing up. Mm-hmm. Um, on the, on um, the song itself, um, I think is a good song. It didn't jump out at me as maybe like we're saying, like Raised by Wolves or mm-hmm. Every Breaking Wave or something like that, but I do like the song. And I know, again, it, it kind of fits in with this album where it's a very personal and you know introspective look back at the band's past. Okay. And Kathy? Um, I'm always interested in a new point of view on any song by you two. Uh-huh. And that's what I think you have here is, is just kind of a different point of view. Um, you know, somebody else's take on it. Um, I think that it's a good version of, of um, a good mix of the song and um, 
you know, it is still the same song that we discussed before, and I yeah. I like it. Yeah, I I song. like these remix, these alternate versions as much as I like the original versions. Mm-hmm. I think these are they're both equally valid. One is not less than the other. They're both equally good. Uh, they could have substituted these versions on the original right. band version, and I would not have thought they sounded that, out of I'm place. I'm in that core, too. Yeah, I that's agree well with you. Yeah, yeah, I think we all agree, yeah. yeah. On, on Sleep Like a Baby, the one thing that at least maybe because I was trying to li- you know listen so intently yeah. because I knew we were going to be discussing this the deluxe edition here, it, this song probably comes the closest, or this this recording, this remix, comes the closest kind of to where U2 was with Octane Baby in terms of it kind of has some electronica elements, and it sounds like they've done something with Bono's vocals, maybe give it a little bit of the industrial sound. And and I did like that it harkened back to that. And I know with U2 it's mm-hmm. important for them to go forward and kind of keep being you know relevant in the, in, in the here and now. Mm-hmm. But I do like the fact that this whole album is kind of looking back. And with this particular remix it it kind of it hasn't gone all the way back to the 70s for mm-hmm. you too but it has gone back to the early 90s okay and of course coming up then is going to be songs of maturity which is going to be part two of this so we'll we'll want to discuss that um as well but let's uh just very quickly here um we talked about the backlash uh that was received from it being available to everybody for free in their itunes folder and their in their purchase folder the, some of the backlash that some people had and any comments, does, does, does anybody want to comment on the apology uh, first? Anybody want to talk about that? We'll let Kathy start on that one. Yeah, she's kind of, she's kind of uh, chomping at the yeah. bit. Um, well, I I'm, I'm kind of don't think that there should have been an apology. There shouldn't have been a need. The band shouldn't have felt the need to make an apology, A. And they shouldn't have apologized, uh-huh. B. Um, they didn't do anything wrong. They sold this to Apple. Apple gave it as a gift. If if somebody that you know slightly or a store comes up and says, we want to give you this free gift, do you walk away from it? If if somebody you know, a friend, gives you a gift, do you return it back and say, no, here, I don't want this? Mm-hmm. Well, I might walk into a store that says, you know, like, here, we're offering a free gift of something, and it's something that I want. I might say, no, thank you, because I feel like it's just going to go to waste. Yeah. But I'm not going to get angry about yeah, that's, it. That's a, yeah, I'm that's not going to go, well, F you. Don't don't hand me a free gift, and that's I think where I, I kind of draw the line. And I agree with you. Uh, I don't think Bono should have apologized. He did not give it away. The band did not give it away. They Apple sold it to they Apple. They sold it to Apple and for they... about a hundred million. And Apple chose to to uh, to you know to to gift it to everybody. Yeah. 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 yeah the band no, owed nobody an apology. Yes, yeah, so I and yeah. shouldn't have apologized. Yeah. 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 I that's agree. Yeah. It, it, it's just a weird age, you know how spoiled and in, in the in this society is when. We, you know, just the whole technological revolution, how we have so many things at our fingertips today. You know, you can walk into a, a coffee shop and they have free Wi-Fi for you or this and that. And here, a, a company like Apple does give back, you yeah. know, and I, and I know the three of us are Apple users. I, I went to the Apple store this week and they're so helpful. Here they are giving back and then people get upset about it. It's just, it, it's like with all the problems in the world, Ebola or, yeah. you know, all these terrible things. Russia, that, the yeah, Ukraine. Russia, Ukraine and yeah. all these things. And for people to be upset about that, it just makes me think, you know, we really have it. In, and of course, we're in Southern California, but you almost wonder, do we have it too good if we become too fat and too lazy, uh-huh. so to speak? Not to, you know, it's just kind of unfortunate. Well, I'm sure it wasn't just Californians who were complaining about it. Um, I wrote on my Facebook page not too long after it happened. I, I just because I had read this article, someone had posted an article uh, where you had you know basically tech people trying to find a complex sociological reason for the anger yeah. over this. And I said I linked to the article and said there is no complex reason for this. The internet is just filled with a lot of whiny bitches mm-hmm. who need to complain about something. Yeah, One, that's true. And the other thing I said was I feel like some people I think are upset that they were robbed of the opportunity to illegally steal it off the internet yeah, yeah. first. Yeah. Instead, it was given to them. So yeah, now yeah. I, they don't even have the satisfaction <laughs> to say, oh, yeah, I stole it, man. I'm yeah. so cool because I stole this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, that's the other thing I kind of Yeah, felt. you wonder if the same people that are so upset about this, if it doesn't bother them that people are going in and taking movies and they're taking music and things that, you know, the thing is all of us, especially around this table, we all like the fact that, the, that there are 
so many great movies and great albums and, mm-hmm. and musicians and actors mm-hmm. and directors and people that are trying to do mm-hmm. these great creative things and they are entitled to be compensated for their work. Yeah. You know, and and to, and, and it it's amazes me that so Apple has done something I they went ahead and paid you two for the for their album and then they shared that with, with people that have iTunes and what's wrong with that. I yeah. I just if you don't like it you delete it. Well you don't you even know? bother to download it because it yeah, wasn't even on your computer. Yeah, it was exactly. just in your purchase yeah. folder on iTunes which is on their server right. in the cloud. Cloud. You just don't bother to yeah. download it to your computer, or you download. If it makes you feel better, you can download it and delete it. Yeah, yeah, of course, it, it really feeling, yeah. it really gives you a good feeling. Yeah, but I really do feel. I really do think that probably a lot of these people who complained are the same people who steal movies, steal music online. I, I get the feeling, you know, you get all these people who think this stuff should be free. Okay, here it's for free. Well, no, now we're upset. Mm-hmm. You know, we want it to be free on our terms. Yeah, that's a good, that's uh, a great, I, you know, I have a feeling, I just have a feeling, I have nothing scientific to prove that, but I yeah. just have a feeling it's kind of the same people. Yeah. Uh, some people felt it was an invasion of privacy. Mm-hmm. And my feeling was if I gifted you an album, if I bought an album on iTunes and gifted it to you, it'd kind of be the same thing. You'd get a, le- a notice saying, you've got a gift, come redeem it. Well, let, well here, here's somewhere where I can speak from, an, uh, from experience. I'm a music writer, so I get every week. Dozens and dozens of record labels or bands are sending me links or they're sending yeah. me, you know, emails with, you know, and they're, they're not asking for me. They just send me the emails. Mm-hmm. And, and it's my choice. If I choose to download that or open that up and check out their music, I can. If I, if I don't have time or if it's not something I'm interested in, I mm-hmm. can delete that. And, and my thing is I'm not going to be offended that somebody sent me yeah. their, their music and stuff. Yeah. I, I just, I'm just actually just so surprised. And I can understand maybe a handful of, of people did it, but the fact that that this became a major news story and became blew up the internet with all it's like it like I said I think it it speaks kind of sadly for our society. Yeah, I know? would agree. I would agree. So that's probably the last thing I want to say about that. Okay, I think we've I think we <laughs> yeah that I think that sums it up. I think we've talked it out. Okay, okay. <laughs> and um, one other thing here um, that I would like to bring up is the cover. Now the cover on this deluxe edition and on the single disc release mm-hmm. is different from the cover we got on the free download. And um, I kind of, when I first saw this cover, I did wonder to myself, are, are there going to be some people that will misinterpret this cover and see this cover as some form of homoeroticism or, or you'd have some, you'd have a couple of uh, Yahoo saying, Oh, this means they're gay. They look gay. This looks gay because he's hugging a man. He's hugging a dude. Um, and I kind of wondered if, 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 we, if, if there wasn't going to be something along that. I haven't heard anything about it. And, uh, and actually the cover is, uh, he's hugging his son here, actually. This yes, is his, that's yeah. his oldest son. That, that's his oldest son there on the cover. And... And we should mention that's Larry on the cover. Yeah, that's Larry, of course. Yeah. Yes, excuse me. That's Larry. We're, we're looking at the cover, just assuming yeah. everybody knows because yeah. we're YouTube fans. That's Larry on the cover, holding his son, right, right there. And um, anybody want to talk about what they feel the cover means? Anybody want to talk about what they feel the cover means? In my mind, he's protecting his innocence. That's what this song, this album is about. Protecting his son's innocence. It's protecting his son's innocence, which a lot of fathers want to do for their children. Yes. Yeah. And see, it's funny. And then my interpretation, you know, and it could be. You know, just just as valid, but maybe I'm wrong, or maybe can't. But I thought it was almost like he's reaching back and and hugging who he you know who he was when he was young. But that was before I knew it was his, his son. So that I think, but Kathy's his son could remember, represent that. It could. It, that's that's what I'm represent. His son represents your son yeah. represents yourself when you were yeah. younger, right? And yeah, and, so and you're, you're trying to reach back and get and, in touch with who you were then. Yeah, to, exactly. To, to to kind of mine that out and artistically. You know, share that through the music. Yeah, those are and and yeah, and those are both uh, great interpretations, and they're probably equally as valid. That's right. And yeah. my interpretations would probably be the same. This is just symbolic of him uh, wanting to, you know, recapture, understand that time of in his life, and also protecting the innocence of his children, mm-hmm. which any parent wants to do. And of course, every parent eventually is going to fail doing. Yeah. Every parent is going to fail protecting their children's innocence because you want point, them to grow up and become their who yeah they you want are. them to become adults yeah, and it's yeah. going to happen and it's, it's going to happen, happen. Exactly. but we still have this in inborn need to do that though right to right. do that for some reason that sounds like an interesting topic for a YouTube song too yeah maybe they'll cover that in songs of maturity there there we go who knows when there's a follow up <laughs> and hopefully we can all get together again and discuss that album when it comes out yeah hopefully yeah look forward to it yeah well every yes. time U2 comes out with a new album you know. Whether you love it, hate it, or indifferent, or something, you're getting, you're getting, you know, you're sharing a very unique 
journey with a band. I mean, there's really been no band that I can think of like you two where it's been the same four members over this amount of time without a breakup, without a hiatus. They have been, you know, through good times and bad, these guys have soldiered on and, and shared with the world some great music. I'm, I'm of the same opinion. Um, there are many artists where it's like, at, at, I'm at a point with them now where it's like, an album that's even, I might consider a misstep, is more interesting than what pretty much everybody else is doing anyway. So I, I, even if I think it's a misstep, which I don't think this album is, yeah, yeah. Um, it's not my ultimate favorite, but, it, but I certainly don't think it's a misstep. But even, even, their, even a misstep I'm going to be more uh, interested in than most, uh, most everybody else. else and I think we've music. talked about this. I mean, the two artists that have this kind of staying power that have been this relevant to me are, are Neil Young and... And you too. I mean, uh -huh. so many bands, there's some bands that I love that have been around a long time, like the Zombies, but they were on hiatus for a while or they didn't do new music mm -hmm. for an extended time. You too and Neil Young don't have that. They have these, these really amazing careers where over decade after decade, you've got to hear a band really you know, do mm -hmm. something different, or in Neil Young's case, an artist do something, and it's exciting, and I'm glad we've been able to, they've been able to take us along on that ride. You cool. Know? Okay. So I guess... That wraps this up, I think. I think so. I think we've talked this out. And we thank you so much for joining us. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. And thank you to everybody that's been sharing the shows, our episodes on their Facebook and Twitter. We really appreciate it. And we hope you found this discussion interesting and informative. And please share us your, with us your thoughts on not only Songs of Innocence, the album, but on this bonus disc that's included with the deluxe edition. And so we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.